Hey everyone, in this lesson we're talking about anemia and an approach to determining the cause of anemia. In future lessons we're going to look at um, what are the sign some of the signs and symptoms of anemia and we're also going to look at other important information on anemia. So to begin, what is anemia? Well, if we look at the word anemia, anemia is, literally means lack of blood. But really what the definition of anemia is, is that it is a decrease in red blood cell mass. So that means that when we look at adult males in particular, anemia is defined when an adult male has a hemoglobin less than 130 grams per liter or a hematocrit of less than 0.41. And it's a little bit different in females. It's when um, hemoglobin is less than 120 grams per liter in women or when hematocrit is less than 0.36. So those indicators are how we determine if adult males or adult females have anemia. Now there are many, many different causes of anemia. And what we do is we look at what is called the mean corpuscular volume or MCV in order to determine what the cause of anemia is. This helps us to narrow our focus to figure out what the cause of anemia is. What is mean corpuscular volume? Well, it is actually um, the measurement of um, the average volume of a red blood cell. So we look at a lot of red blood cells in a blood smear or an other um, measurement of a red blood cell size. We take the average of all the sizes of those red blood cells and that's basically what the mean corpuscular volume is. So the first one is when we have low MCV or low mean corpuscular volume and that is defined as less than 80. If it's less than 80, that means it's microcytic. So if there's anemia with a low MCV, that's microcytic anemia. So what are some of the causes of microcytic anemia? One of the largest causes is iron deficiency. And this is one of the most common causes, if not the most common cause of anemia itself, but also microcytic anemia. And this leads to a very low MCV. Other causes can include some genetic causes. Thalassemia is one of them. There's also anemia of chronic disease. So if patients have some type of chronic disease, perhaps uh, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, they can have some form of microcytic anemia. There's also sideroblastic anemia. This can lead to microcytic anemia. There's also lead poisoning as a potential cause as well. When we look at mean corpuscular volumes that range from 80 to 100, this is considered normal. This is a normal MCV. This is considered normocytic. If it's anemia with an MCV in this range, it's normocytic anemia. And when we have normocytic anemia, we have to do a little bit extra investigative work. We have to look at reticulocytes, or reticulocyte count. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. So when we look at reticulocytes, and if they're high, we have to narrow it down even further. One possible cause of high reticulocyte count in the context of normocytic anemia is hemolysis. Hemolysis itself can be broken down into several different categories. One is inherited. Inherited can be inherited hemoglobinopathies. These can include sickle cell disease, thalassemia, we mentioned that thalassemia can be a microcytic anemia, well, it can also be a normocytic anemia. There's membrane abnormalities that are inherited. These include spherocytic or hereditary spherocytosis. There's also metabolically um, inherited abnormalities that can lead to a normocytic anemia. These include glucose-6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. The next subcategory can be acquired. So if it's not inherited, it can be acquired. Acquired is basically immune, immune related. There's infection related. There is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And there's oxidative. These can all be acquired. The second large category in a normocytic anemia with high reticulocytes is bleeding. Bleeding basically includes one of the largest 
um, source of bleeding, which is GI. These can be occult bleeding. We don't see the bleeding, but it's occurring, and we can't, we're not really sure where it's occurring. Um, GI bleeding can be a big source of bleeding with people that you don't see um, the bleeding in. There's also GU bleeding, genitourinary bleeding as well, that can lead to um, a high reticulocyte normocytic anemia. The second major category in normocytic anemia is, is when the reticulocyte count is low. And when it's low, it means there's decreased production. There's a low number of immature red blood cells, which means there's not they're not being produced. So we got to think about the bone marrow when we think about decreased production. Again, bone marrow is where red blood cells are produced. If there's pancytopenia, we got to think about bone marrow in particular. Aplastic anemia is under this category, as well as MDS, myelofibrosis, all can lead to a pancytopenia with low retics. Leukemia is also an issue. If we see pancytopenia, low reticulocyte count, leukemia, that's another cause as well. TB is also an issue, and amyloidosis if there is bone marrow involvement. Sarcoidosis as well, another infiltrative process. Chemotherapy can also suppress or cause bone marrow suppression. And generally, bone marrow infiltration. Many of these can ca be um, cause infiltration of bone marrow, but bone marrow infiltration in general can lead to decreased production, pancytopenia. PNH is also another cause. When we look at non pancytopenia, so it's just anemia with low reticulocyte count, you've got to think about other causes. One of those is anemia of a chronic disease. So anemia of chronic disease could be due to decreases in erythropoietin levels. Perhaps there is damage to the kidneys, and kidneys are where erythropoietin is produced. They produce less and less EPO. This leads to a low reticulocyte count, normocytic anemia. And again, this all fits together with renal and liver diseases as well. Red cell aplasia can also lead to um, low reticulocyte counts with normocytic anemia. And when we look at the other extreme, when we have high mean corpuscular volumes, and it, high MCV is defined as greater than 100, this is macrocytic. So anemia with high MCV is macrocytic anemia. And macrocytic anemia, you've got to think about megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic. Megaloblastic, if it's megaloblastic, we have to think about the Ds. And what I mean by the Ds is B12 deficiency, so deficiency for a D, folate deficiency, and DNA, D, DNA affecting drugs. These include methotrexate, sulfa, and other chemotherapies. If it's non-megaloblastic, we got to think about alcohol. That's what I want to think. Want you to think about for non-megaloblastic liver disease. Liver disease again from alcohol. Alcoholism itself leads to a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Reticulocytosis can lead to a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia as well. And another important one that a lot of people might have that we have to make sure we don't miss is hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism can lead to a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. So sometimes patients can come in with anemia, but they could have hypothyroidism. If we look at MCV, it's high. Check TSH levels. That'd be important. And myelodysplasia is also another cause of a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. So what I want you to remember from this slide is that high MCV, greater than 100, macrocytic anemia. You gotta break it down to megaloblastic, non-megaloblastic. With megaloblastic, it's the Ds, deficiencies, and DNA affecting drugs. Non-megaloblastic, think of alcohol in particular. Alcoholism, uh, related issues of alcoholism, liver disease, and then also the kind of odd ones, hypothyroidism, which is very important not to miss, and reticulocytosis and myelodysplasia.
Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on anemia and approach to the cause of anemia. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.